Good morning and welcome to the Lebanon Rock Church online message and worship for this Sunday, August the 22nd, 2021. I'm Pastor Matt Skiles and I want to thank you for taking time to join with me and be a part of our online message and worship this morning. We are looking forward to sharing the Word of God with you and bringing the message this morning. But before we do, we want to ask you as always to join with us as we open in prayer. Please take your burdens, your cares, and your petitions to the Lord. And we also especially want to pray for the situation in Afghanistan and also remember all of the victims of the horrific earthquake in Haiti. And you take your burdens, your needs, and your requests to the Lord. And let's invite the presence of God in at this time and ask Him to bless our service this morning. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this day that you've given unto us. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we rejoice, and we are glad in it. Father, we ask that you'll minister to each and every one of us here this morning as we gather together here online to hear the message from your word and to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we ask this morning that you'll minister to those that are in need of healing. We pray that you'll bring healing to the sick bodies, to those that are afflicted and that are in need. We pray for those that have material and financial needs as well. We pray, O oh God, that you'll minister to those that need a spiritual renewal and revival in their heart, that need to be encouraged today and uplifted. And Father, we pray, Lord, that you'll be with all the victims in Haiti of that terrible earthquake that happened this week. And Father, we also pray that you'll be with the situation in Afghanistan to protect our military and service people that are overseas right now. Father, we just uh, submit this service now and this message into your hands we ask that you'll give your word free course and anoint the message and the messenger. And bless us all now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you have your Bibles, your tablets, your smartphones, whatever your Bible app is that you are using today, please go with me to two verses of Scripture. They are found in Galatians chapter 5 and verse number 7 and Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 1. And we'll be sharing a message this morning titled, Being hindered being hindered and again Galatians chapter 5 and verse number 7 and Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 1 I think this is a timely message I hope that it'll bless your heart and I hope that it'll minister unto you today and as we go into the Word of God we're going to be looking at how we as Christians are hindered and what we as Christians need to remember uh, so that therefore we can go forward in our life and not be hindered by things that can keep us from drawing closer to the Lord. So Galatians chapter 5 and verse 7, and Hebrews 12 and verse number 1. And uh, I'm coming out of the King James Bible, but whatever translation and version of Bible you're using this morning is going to be more than useful and more than helpful today. So Paul writes in Galatians 5 and verse 7, You did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? And in Hebrews 12 and 1, we are told, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And again, we're going to be sharing the message titled, Being Hindered. And I think that picture speaks a thousand words because it's a sad story, the image that we have on the background here. This is a picture of a person with a ball and chain attached to their ankle, hindering their movement and ability to go forward. Today we're gonna to talk about hindrances. And this picture here that I have used for the backdrop shows a person that is hindered in his mobility. I wonder today if we had some kind of a spiritual camera that was shining on our lives. How many of us would it show that have things in our lives that are hindering us spiritually? Far too many of us, I'm afraid, would be guilty of being hindered by something in our lives. We are told in the Word of God that we walk by faith and not by sight. But many Christians in 2021 are being hindered and don't even realize that it's happening. And I hope and pray that this message this morning will be used of God to help awaken us and help us understand that there are chains that can hinder us. And I believe that God wants us to, to not only be free in Christ, 
but to go forward in Christ. We are told in Hebrews 12 and verse 1 to lay aside the weight and the sins that so easily beset us. Another translation of the word says that so easily entangles us, likening to a person that is tangled up in trips and falls. Well, I believe that we serve a mighty God and an awesome God. But, you know, there are times that even God can be hindered by us. And the scripture tells, tells us in the word of God in, in Psalm 78, verse 41, Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. And in Matthew's gospel, in Matthew 13 and verse 58, the Bible says that he, that being Jesus, did not many miracles there because of their unbelief. Now the text in Psalm 78 verse 41 that I just read to you a moment ago uh, is from the King James Bible. But most other translation, translations of that particular scripture and that particular phrase say they pained God. They, in other words, they, 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 they pained God because God was unable to do something in their midst. Uh, the Hebrew word, which means to pain something, means to scrabble or to limit or to set a mark or a boundary of limitation. And so for this reason, a lot of commentators and scholars suggest that it means that the people of God cause God pain by limiting him and his power in their life. And I think a lot of us do that ourselves. And in Matthew chapter 13 and verse 58, it teaches us that God was also limited through Jesus Christ in doing very many miracles because of the unbelief. But also, too, as Christian believers, we need to understand that we can be hindered. We can be hindered. In 1 Thessalonians 2 and 18, Paul writes, Wherefore we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. That suggests to us that our enemy, Satan, will try to hinder the will of God in our life, will try to upset and stop the plan of God in our life, and ultimately will try to stop God's ultimate plan and will for our life and for the body of Christ and for the world. I've often looked at that verse many times and, and thought, you know, Paul forgot to mention that everything worked out for God's glory and everything worked out for, for the plan of God. But he just left that phrase as it was because Satan had hindered them. But thank God they were able to see that through to victory. And so we must understand that God can be hindered by the unbelief of his children and the unbelief of his people. And also, uh, we ourselves can be hindered by the enemy Satan when he tries to come in and begin to steal uh, our joy, steal our faith, steal our victory begins to interrupt and upset the plan and the work that God has for us. We live in a world today where people have been hindered. There has been many hindrances in our lives over the last 18 months. You don't have to be a genius to see where uh, the enemy has tried to hinder the work of God, the ministry of God, and the plan of God. We see where people that are in government uh, positions and, and government officials have tried to limit the time we spend in the house of God have tried to limit uh, what we can do in the house of God. But thankfully, we have seen the body of Christ continue to go forth in faith, continue to pray and seek God. I believe the church has awakened because of this. And I truly believe that our best days as the body of Christ are ahead of us. And we're going to see God do some great things in the body of Christ, not just in 2021, but in the days and weeks and months and years ahead. But we cannot be hindered. We cannot allow ourselves to become hindered by things that would bring us down to defeat and bring us to a place of spiritual death. So let's look at a couple of ways and a couple of things that can be hindered today. And our first point that we want to convey and unpack from the message as we talk about being hindered is this. Worship, your worship, can be hindered. In Psalm chapter 137, verses 1 through 4, we read these words of the psalmist. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down and wept. When we remembered Zion, upon the willows in the midst of it, we hung our harps. For there our captors demanded of us songs. 
and our tormentors mirth, saying, Sing unto us one of the songs of Zion. How can we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? Now, they were in a place of suffering. And notice very carefully what these people of God did. They hung up their harps. They stopped worshiping. There are things that can happen to you that may, want, uh, that may make you want to hang up your harp, so to speak. That may make you want to stop worshiping God. And understand this, we praise God for what he does for us. The blessings he gives us, the provision he brings to us. Uh, the, the new day that he gives to us each morning where his mercies are new every morning. I praise God for what he does for me, for my wife, for my family. But we worship God for who he is. He is the Lord God Jehovah, the Lord God Almighty. And I think some of us need to understand and learn how to sing the songs of Zion when we find ourselves in a strange land or in a foreign land or in a strange situation or in a difficult time. Because you will find yourself in difficulties like these people in Psalm 137. You'll find yourselves in a place that's strange to you, in a situation that's unknown to you. Circumstances out of your control. And the enemy will try to take away that heart of worship and that, that worship in your heart to the Lord. You see, your worship in times of difficulty has the power to release not only yourself, but also others around you. You see, in Acts chapter 16, we read where the apostle Paul not only cast a demon out of a demon-possessed girl, but because the miracle was so great, Paul and Silas were, were cast in to a prison cell. And in Acts chapter 16, the Bible tells us at midnight, they began to worship and praise God. And the Bible tells us that a great earthquake came and their chains fell off, the prison doors flung open. And not only were Paul and Silas set free, but also we read in the scripture there where everyone in that prison was also also free and saved and experienced salvation, including the Roman jailer that asked them, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? You see, your worship in a difficult time often will have much more greater impact than you can even begin to imagine. Because anybody can praise God and worship God when everything goes well. But you see, our worship can be hindered because we simply... Uh, do not understand that God inhabits the praises of his people. And when we worship God, we worship him in spirit and in truth. In John chapter 4, Jesus told the little woman at the well in Samaria, he said, he said the hour is coming when the true worshipers will worship, will worship God in spirit and in truth. True worship worships God no matter what. Whether you're in a jail cell, as the Apostle Paul was, or whether you're basking in the glow of blessing and victory in a sanctuary of believers and God is doing great things in your life, doing great things in your marriage, doing great things in your finances, doing great things in the lives of your family and children, and you worship him with relative ease, it doesn't matter because you worship God no matter what because our, our worship can be hindered if we're not careful. Our second point we want to share this morning is that fear can hinder us. Fear can hinder us. The Bible tells us in the Word of God these words that Paul said to Timothy. And I think it's important that we, we realize how important it is that we as Christians uh, remember that we are not given over to fear. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, Verse 6 and verse 7, Paul says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Verse 7 is the key. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We don't have to walk in fear. We don't have to be afraid. How many times in the New Testament do we hear the Lord Jesus say to his disciples, you know, why did you fear? Be not afraid. He told Jairus, whose 12-year-old daughter was 
uh, pronounced dead by his servants whenever they told him, your daughter is dead. Why do you trouble the teacher any longer? And Jesus turned and said, be not afraid, only believe. Fear can hinder you and can hinder me. And I want you to picture in your mind two containers, one in a bucket inside a house and one planted outside. How do you think these two plants will grow? The one that's planted outside can spread its roots and will likely grow much higher and flourish more. The other one, the other plant that's planted inside where its roots are limited to the bucket size will be stunted. In an effort to protect the tree, many people put it in a bucket, but it's stalled in its ability to grow and to flourish. In like manner, there's a difference between healthy fear and a fear that can literally drain the life out of a person. There's a healthy fear that people demonstrate. Uh, for example, uh, many people uh, have been very careful in the way they live their life and the way they conduct themselves day by day due to coronavirus. Uh, they are uh, simply practicing a healthy fear. Uh, there's also a, uh, something that can be understood. Uh, how I have a very healthy fear of electricity. So when I'm working in my home, I, I have a very, very good understanding of the power of electricity and voltage. And so when I'm working on a project here at church with some of our men in church or during a work day or working on a project in my home, I have a very healthy fear of electricity. So I handle it very carefully. There's a big difference between having a healthy fear and being wise to the dangers of things around us and simply living in, in constant fear. I know of people that uh, have walked in fear their whole life. They're afraid of things. They're afraid to step out in faith. They're afraid to enter into worship. Now, we are a full gospel, spirit-filled Pentecostal church here at Lebanon Rock Church. And there are times when the Spirit of God will move in our worship service. We'll move during our times when we sing and worship and lift up the name of the Lord Jesus. Many people have a need in their life. Maybe they need prayer for sickness. Maybe they need prayer for a need in their life. Maybe they just need to enter in and, and obey the Lord and operate in one of the gifts of the Spirit. But because of fear, they don't do that. Because of fear, we don't obey the Lord. And that hinders us in our spiritual world. It hinders us in doing something for the Lord Jesus Christ. Many times in the Bible, we read where people were held back because of fear. I'm so grateful that we have the great example of Jesus walking on the water. And when Simon Peter saw him along with the other disciples in the boat, he said, Lord, if it be thee, bid me to come out unto thee. And Jesus said, come. Now, we can find a lot of fault with Peter. But one thing you cannot fault him on is his faith. And he was not fearful. He stepped out of the boat and walked to Jesus. Now, he later did sink when he began to look at the waves and he began to take his eyes off of Jesus, which again reminds us of how important it is to look unto Jesus as the author and finisher of our faith and continue to walk with him, not walking in fear. The Bible says perfect love casteth out all fear. And God doesn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Third point that we want to share this morning is this. Our giving and our offerings can be hindered. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 23 and 24, Jesus reminds us of these words. If therefore you are presenting your offering at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, Leave your offering there before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and present your offering. Our text tells us in the word of God that our offerings to the Lord won't be accepted if people have legitimate griefs against us. What does this mean? It means our offering that we give to God is not acceptable whenever we have not asked for forgiveness or made things right. We need to give out of a cheerful heart. We need to give out of a generous spirit. But we also need to make sure that we are right with God and right with others. You see, it doesn't matter how much we give to God. It's the condition of our heart when we give that matters. Because Jesus saw a woman in the temple at the treasury as he watched all the other wealthy people there pouring in and dumping in money into the treasury throw in just two mites. 
And when she did that, or one mite, which was two pence, excuse me, when she threw in her mite, she gave it with such a sincere heart and gave everything she could give. And Jesus knew her heart was pure before him. Many of us come into church and we're angry and we're bitter and we're upset or offended at someone. And then we give an offering to God, not realizing that there's our heart's not right with him. I think it's time we understand that we need to be praying and seeking God and asking for forgiveness so that our giving and our offerings will not be hindered. And also, too, it's important to remember that we need to give with a cheerful heart, not begrudging. Because God loves a cheerful giver. And many times when we give, we should give with a thankful heart. And we should be mindful that our heart is, is pure and is righteous before God. Fourthly, another point we want to convey here is that our hearing of God can be hindered. Our hearing from God can be hindered. In Hebrews chapter 5 verses 11 and 12, the writer of Hebrews writes, Concerning him we have much to say. And it is hard to explain, since you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you have need again for someone to teach you the elementary principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. Christian believer, saint of God, your ability to hear God speak can be hindered. And the writer of Hebrews goes on to say that strong meat, the meat of the word that is, is given to those who by practices have their senses trained. If you read the word of God only once a month, don't expect an explosion of revelation from God when you crack it open once a month. I know that's kind of sarcastic uh, and cynical to say, but we should be in the word every day, every day. We have to practice and develop a spiritual habit of studying the word of God because the Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so when we put the word of God into our heart, God's going to reveal his truth to us. We need to have the ability to have a hearing heart. We need for God to give us, to give us a mindset and, 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 and ears to hear. That's why every time I pray over a message I preach, I pray and ask the Lord to give us ears to hear and hearts to receive. You see, the Bible tells us in the scriptures that we need to be slow to speak and swift to hear. But when it comes to hearing from God and hearing from the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of God, we should not be dull of hearing. The writer of Hebrews says here in Hebrews 5, 11 and 12 that these Christian believers we're dull of hearing. They should be teachers. They should be leaders. They should be doing more in the kingdom of God. But they simply need to go back to the elementary part of the scripture and, 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 and drink the milk of the word instead of trying to eat and consume the meat of the word. That speaks of spiritual immaturity. So our, our hearing can be hindered. We need to pray, God, give us a hearing heart. Stay in the word of God. Study God's word and spend time with God each day in his word. I promise you, you will grow, but you will also be able to hear and be sensitive to what the word of God and what the Lord is trying to speak to your heart and to your life. And our fifth and final point is this. Our prayers can be hindered. And, you know, prayer can be hindered in two ways. The first is praying itself can be hindered by ourselves or by evil principalities. And also the second one is by evil principalities. And the second is receiving is, is that receiving answers can also be hindered. I, I got ahead of myself there. So our praying can be hindered by ourselves and also by spiritual uh, forces and principalities. And also the answers to our prayer can be hindered. I want to give you a couple of texts that show how we can hinder our own prayers. And as Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 2, I pulled this out of the New American Standard Bible. It says, but your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. What that's saying there is there's nothing wrong with God. The wrong is in us. You see, our lives and our sinful ways have caused a division and split between us and God. 
And he doesn't hear us because of the sin in our life. I know that's harsh to say, but that's the truth just the same. Your sin can keep your prayers from being heard, and sin can hinder our prayers. And also, because of our sinful life, we can cause our prayers to go unanswered. But also, too, we must understand that, that also, too, there is demonic spirits and principalities that, that will try to not only keep us from praying, but also will try to hinder our prayers. <laughs> because, you see, if we don't understand the power of prayer, we will never be able to grow spiritually. The great uh, evangelist Leonard Ravenhill was quoted as saying, A sinning man will stop praying. And a praying man will stop sinning. I like that. I like that very, very much. And Vance Havener once joked in a sermon he was preaching to a church that he said, any housewife that serves the Lord knows the best way to remember the things that she meant to do and maybe perhaps forgot to do is to just start praying. Because as soon as she begins to pray, the devil will bring all those things to her mind that she needs to get done to try to divert her from prayer. Now that was said in the 1970s, so that was quite a few years ago. Much different culture, much different time then. But I promise you, when you go to prayer, it's amazing how quickly we can get distracted. It's amazing how quickly things can come into our mind or in, thoughts begin to come into that place where we, where we intend to spend time talking to God in prayer. You know, it's important to understand that when we pray, we're talking to God. And understand God hears our prayers. Sometimes he says yes. Sometimes God says no. And other times God says wait. But God always answers the prayer. In Daniel chapter 10 and verse 20, we read where the angel said, Do you know why I have come to you? Soon I will return to fight against the prince of Persia. And when I go, the prince of Greece will come. Now, this text refers to, a, to the previous chapter in Daniel 9, where Daniel had a vision and couldn't understand, but he prayed and he waited on the Lord. For 21 days, he waited. And he is told that his waiting for the angel of the Lord to come and answer was caused by an evil spirit, a demonic force, a demonic spirit that was given charge over Persia that hindered the answer from coming. And in the chapter, in, ver, in chapter 10 and verse 20, we read where the angel states that a different spiritual evil is coming, the prince of Greece, to try to hinder him again. So this text teaches us that evil spirits work to prevent prayers from being answered. And that certain regions have evil demonic forces that control them and work over them. This explains in part why some places like major cities and metropolitan areas have high murder rates, are dominated uh, by crime. That's why we have places where sex trafficking seems to uh, be running rampant, where gambling and, and drug, uh, uh, drug trafficking seems to take place. You see the violence and evil in our world, and, and there's certain places in our nation you just simply can't go to because of the danger. And a lot of that, which most people don't understand, is demonic in its source and demonic in its element. Daniel was praying and prayed for 21 days. And the angel of the, the Lord finally appeared to him and said, I would have been to you. God heard your prayer. But he said very, very clearly in the scripture that the prince of Persia, the demonic spirit, oh, the demon power that was over Persia was hindering him. You see... It's important for us to realize that our prayers can be hindered. Now, Jesus, Jesus did speak very, very plainly about the power of prayer. Matthew 7, verse 1 and 2, he said, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth. To him that seeketh he findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened unto him. That speaks there that sometimes we're going to have to wait. Sometimes we're going to have to be patient. Because, as Luke 21 and 19 says, in your patience possess ye your soul. It speaks there of sometimes having to wait for God to do something in our life. Because 
It's not us that's hindering, but it is the enemy trying to hinder God and his angels in the presence of God from moving in our situation. So we need to wait upon the Lord and be patient and let God's plan come to pass in fruition. And having said all that, I want to remind you of two things about hindered prayer. Prayer delayed is not prayer denied. Now, sometimes, sometimes God says no. God also says yes. And many times God says wait. So prayer delayed is not prayer denied. And also Jesus taught us to keep praying. Luke 18 and 1 says, Then spake he a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Now, the New Living Translation reads it this way in Luke 18, 1. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. So, as we bring this message to a close, I know we've covered a lot today. But I encourage you, don't let your worship be hindered. Don't hang up your harp. And if you have, then pick it back up. Pray for victory. Pray for victory. Recognize that there's a spiritual warfare over praying and prayers being answered. Don't be bound by fear and don't allow yourself, don't allow yourself to be given over to defeat. The answer is on the way and the Lord is going to move in your life. It is time we understand that we don't have to be hindered. And if we are being hindered, we need to ask God to set us free from that, to break those chains that have us bound, to set us free. Jesus said in John 8 and 32 that uh, if the Son shall make you free, you will be free indeed. So I want you to take this message to heart this morning. Be encouraged. And as you go into this next week of your life, I pray that we will understand that we don't have to be bound. We don't have to be hindered. The Lord can break those shackles and take them off of us so that we can begin to run with patience the race that is set before us. Let us close with a word of prayer and ask God to bless us as we begin this, this week uh, and this upcoming week of our life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the opportunity that we've had to come together to hear this message this morning. Father, if there is one here this morning that is being hindered, Lord, if they are not able to worship you like they would like to, Lord, if, if they are being hindered by fear, Lord, if, they are, if, if their giving has been hindered because of uh, perhaps a grudge or a stumbling block of offense that they have in their heart, Lord, if we need to make things right with someone, let us do that. And Lord, if we are praying and, and growing impatient while we're praying. Lord, help us to continue, to continue to be patient and wait upon you. Lord, the enemy would love nothing better than to hinder your will, your purpose, and your plan for each and every one of us. Father, forgive us, Lord, for the times we've doubted. Forgive us, Lord, of our sins, our iniquities. Forgive us of our failures. Lord, we ask that you will just wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ. And forgive us, Lord, of our sins as we forgive those who have sinned and trespassed against us. And Lord, let us lay aside the weight and the sin that so easily besets us. And let us begin to run with patience the race that is set before us. For Lord, I know there are good days ahead and brighter days ahead. And Lord, help us to walk by faith and not by sight. And Lord, as we go into this next week of our life, Lord, let us not be hindered. Let us be free. Let us worship. Let us enter into your presence and walk with you day by day. Now bless us, Lord. Bring us back at the appointed time as we dismiss from this place and gathering, but not from your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you again for joining with us. Have a wonderful week. Make sure you join us for Wednesday in the Word as we continue our study of the book of Romans. And be sure to join us next week for our final August Sunday service next Sunday, August the 29th. So have a wonderful week. God bless you, and we'll see you all next time.